You know, one of the most common roadblocks that we, we see people face in coming back into a relationship with Jesus is that Jesus might be enough to forgive you, but he could never forgive me. You ever said that to yourself? You ever said to yourself that you've out the cross? You ever said to yourself that your dysfunction and your brokenness is so great that God might be able to forgive the likes of some of you, but no one like me? And there's no greater lie that could ever be told by the enemy. It's false. It's a breakdown. It's, it's, it's not the truth of it. When we become like the rest of the world, when we're led by greed, when we're led by lust, when we're led by our unhealthy desires, what happens? When we trust our own way of thinking, we hamstring ourselves from having the relationship that God intends us to have, from leading others the way that God has created us to lead. You know how good trust yourself sounds? It's a trigger in the frontal cortex. It's a gut feeling. It's when, it's when your brain believes something, yet it hasn't processed the words to be able to convey what's really going on. And we say things like, trust your gut. Trust yourself. Just believe in yourself. And, and as uncomfortable as it is, there's no more fabricated mindset of the world. What it is saying is that I know better to trust myself than to lean on the understanding of God than to lean on the truth of God. As uncomfortable as it is, we need to understand that we are not the one to put our trust in. It's Jesus. So where does trust begin? How do you begin to build trust? It's simple. It's a reliance on Jesus. It's knowing the truth of who Jesus is and committing in this life to knowing as much as can be revealed through his word and convicted through his spirit And then growing in a capacity to trust the truth that we find in God. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The second thing is, how do you sustain trust? Have you ever heard the phrase, show me your friends and I'll show you your future? Do you know why we read in Acts chapter 2 as the church formed? Why they continued to meet together daily? Why they continued to pour into one another's lives daily. It was to keep this correction of thought focused on Jesus. Who do you surround yourself with? Some of you need better friends. Some of you need somebody who holds you accountable to be the trustworthy person that God's called you to be and redeemed you to be. And the third question, it's the hard one, is how do you rebuild trust? How do we begin to start over? I'm too far gone, I'm too broken, and there's no help for me. As long as we have breath in our lungs, we have the opportunity to repent and turn back to God. I want to be a church who lives in that. You know what some of us need to do? I'm I'm pleading with you on this. Some of you as a couple, you need to read what David said when he was aware that that he betrayed God, where he had had committed adultery with Bathsheba, that he'd, he'd completely realigned things. Blind spot, sin. And he cries out to God in Psalm 51, and he said, God, create in me a pure heart. This should be, somebody should have the courage to pray this as a couple. Somebody should have the courage to pray this before they walk into their work environment. God, create in me a pure heart, oh God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Don't cast me from your presence or take away your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and grant me a, a willing spirit to sustain me. What if you prayed that every day? What if that became your soul's desire? Create in me something new, God. Friends, trust begins with the Lord. Modeling Christ, we begin to rebuild trust where it's been broken in our life. I know it sounds simple, but it starts with him. What if we were a church that modeled relationships in this way?